So you've seen it all before, budget builds, high-end builds, keyboard reviews, headphone reviews, you're like, damn Brian, I need a new fix. Surely you can't provide us with something. Well today, guys, I have a new fix for you. We're gonna be silicon gunning, or essentially gluing down a CPU to a motherboard and seeing if the temperatures are any different to that of a massive cooler, the Reven Akinos, and also a budget cooler, the TX3. So let's get this comparison underway. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, this is Brian coming to you guys today with a video on three different CPU coolers and one of them is going to be glued down to the motherboard. That's right, we're gluing this thing down for pure price performance. Now I picked this CPU cooler up for around about $4 in a junk hunt a long time ago. Now sometimes you get these really good coolers but they don't have the mounting kits and that's exactly the case here. So we're gonna try and get the best price performance possible by silicon gunning it down to the motherboard. And now this won't really work with a PGA socket unless you do it around the edges, but in this case, we've got an LGA board. And so essentially the CPU and the socket is going to be holding the cooler together. And with that, it shouldn't come apart. Well, hopefully, I mean, with the temperature tests that we do later on, we're gonna check out if it does indeed work. Now, we've got some competitors here, the Reven Okinos. This thing is massive, two fans. It's got a mounting kit as well. So we're gonna see this is the big daddy. This is gonna be like the one to compare it to. And then of course, I've thrown in the Cooler Master TX3 as well, which is an entry-level CPU cooler, just to see how this big Sith Ninja or Kabuto, I forgot the exact name of it, compares to these other two coolers. Now with that aside, some of the other parts that we're using is an X3430, which is a $12 CPU off AliExpress, four cores, four threads, and it's overclockable. And we've got a H55 motherboard that I picked up in a used parts hunt over in Thailand. So all these parts are extreme budget, and hence the reason for getting the price performance down by doing what I'm doing here today. Now with that aside, let's get on to all the testing. So I've just finished two rounds of testing now with the TX3 and now the Reven Cooler. And the Reven Cooler did do a lot better than the TX3. However, I would have taken the CPU to 3.8 gigahertz and I did get it to 3.8 gigahertz, but it's really not sustainable on this motherboard as even dropping it down to 3.6 gigahertz after 10 minutes showed that the VRMs on the MOSFETs were measuring it at 68 degrees from an IR gun. And that's really hot. Uh, even the chokes when I was touching them they were getting extremely hot too. So something like this motherboard isn't geared up towards overclocking that much. So 3.6 gigahertz is a happy medium. And even then it was putting out the CPU, uh, I'd have to guesstimate around about 70 watts. So the CPU is running a little bit hot, even at 3.6 gigahertz. I'll try fine tune that, but for the apples to apples to apples test, it's actually a pretty good number. You can see that this cooler, even though it's massive, it is doing a better job than this cooler. But now it's time to whack on the silicon gun cooler and then get the final results for you guys. And we've just silicon gunned now the CPU down, so it's still got a bond, and that usually takes a few hours at least with uh, the clear silicon that I use, but once it's bonded, it is very strong. You see here I'm using the RMX 1000 watt power supply, just as sort of like extra weight to give it a bit of pressure and make sure it's making good contact. And we're gonna come back to this thing in the morning and see how it runs. And it's now morning time and the silicon is all dry and we should be able to pick the motherboard up off the box. And it should be very firm, which it is. And so now we're just gonna install a 140 mil fan on top of this cooler. And we can see here we wanna install it this way so the VRM actually gets some of the cooling off this fan too. So we're gonna silicon this down as well because why is we'll silicon everything down if we're doing the silicon job. The results are in and here we have 
the silicon gunned sith cooler scoring right as expected in my opinion it scored right in between the Reven and the TX3, more closer to the TX3, but the Reven is a massive cooler. It does have a really good mounting kit. It does bolt it down pretty firmly. Uh, the silicon gun cooler obviously not being bolted down as best as it could, but it did score a victory over the TX3, which was good to see, and it could handle the heat. So I'm really impressed with the results. Of course, this is gonna save us a few dollars and the price performance is gonna go up even more. But the biggest thing I like about this, of course, is that top-down fan. Now that's gonna give the VRM some cooling. It's not gonna be amazing, but it is gonna give it a little bit more cooling as opposed to one of the other two solutions that we had on the test bench. Now you may be wondering, why didn't you go out and make a custom frame or zip ties? As I said before, with zip ties, they will get loose over time, or at least in my experience. And also with a custom frame, I mean, guys, it's a $4 cooler. I'm not really gonna waste that much time and go to all those lengths just for a $4 cooler. But with that, the silicon gun, it is extremely fast. Of course, you do have a lot of downtime waiting for the uh, cooler to stick. But in terms of the actual work that needs to be done, it's a really quick fix. It will save you some money. Just keep in mind that you will want to sort of put some pressure on the cooler to make sure that the cooler does make good contact with the CPU and so the silicon actually sticks properly. Now before I get on out of here, one thing to keep in mind is that this is a permanent solution. So if you do decide to do this, just keep in mind that you may have not only a very aesthetically bad looking motherboard and CPU combo, but you will have a permanently attached solution in that if you try to rip the cooler off, especially if you try to twist it off and use brute force, you may damage some hardware in the process. Um, if you use a Stanley knife, you may get better results. Uh, you just have to get some of the silicon left over off. But honestly, for what it's worth, it was a big success. Again, bringing that price performance up through the roof. Uh, $4 cooler, $12 CPU, $30 motherboard. So there really isn't a lot to lose. And how does it perform in games? Well, that is a, another topic for another video coming very soon for you guys, so stay tuned for that. And if you like this video, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below what you think of today's fix. And I'll catch you in another one very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.